G'day, you bloody dickheads. Vaping Bogan, back again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing tip fucking top. Got another Boro Bridge to have a squeeze at. Had this one for quite a while now. There's just been so many to do. I don't want to just do one after another, trying to sort of pepper them in amongst other products. But this one is from Spain, from a company I'm not so familiar with called Ram Mod. It's called the Ovis. You can't really see it. It's in this little Boro here, and I've got a uh, little transfer sticker over the glass. A little bit of uh, Bogan branding there from Ultrev. Thank you very much, sir. I'm running it in my 2019 Kirby billet box, a little bit of orange and pink action with that uh, lovely panel set from Atmo Mods. So a Boro bridge that has some similarities to things like the Mob Mini and the Haku. It's that kind of sort of style of post system. It uh, also offers an MTL kit, so it comes with sort of more of a restricted direct lung pin setup, and then you can get a little MTL kit for it with a, a new cap and different insulator, and we'll go through all the bits and pieces in a second. Uh, I'm now running it uh, once again in uh, direct lung mode, was using an MTL for a while. 0.24 ohm alien in here at uh, 35 watts. Really nice flavour of this one, very, very tasty and uh, yeah, pretty smooth airflow as well. We're going to get into all the bits and pieces, show you the two different options you can run it in. The MTL kit is sold separately, but obviously yeah, you can run it in direct lung and then if you buy that kit, MTL, so I'm going to show you how those work. And then I'm going to do a little uh, build and wicking tutorial for you as well. But before we can get to any of that, yeah, we've got to have a fucking beer. So we've got a Spanish bridge and we're going to have a Belgian beer. This one is Petrus Bordeaux. It is from uh, Brewery de Brabandera. I, I think I'm saying that right. Brewery de Brabandera. Um, yeah, fucking who knows. <laughs> it's a, uh, a sour, a Flanders red ale. One of my favourite styles of beer, the uh, Belgian red ale, the sour red ales that Belgium is very well known for should be uh, pretty woody. It's got a bit of uh, barrel ageing on this one, it says. Uh, just a tender five and a half fucking percent. But uh, let's see how it fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. As you can see, a pretty dark complexion that usually comes with these sort of uh, barrel-aged Belgian sours. Oh, smells fruity and, uh, yeah, a little woody. It's got that sort of cask-aged kind of smell to it. Cheers, dickheads. That's not bad. That's not bad. Not as much fruit flavour as the Lindemann's sort of uh, line of barrel-aged sours. Has that same sort of woodiness to it, though. Got that oak ageing kind of uh, flavour to it. Has a little bit of a sour feel, but definitely could be a bit more fucking sour. But has a, a nice sort of malty sour to it. That's what I'm getting with this one. A woody, malty sour. Doesn't have the sweet fruit uh, sort of uh, flavours that uh, I'm used to. Yeah, tangy and earthy, woody and oaky, and a little bit sort of um, roasted and malty. That's not bad. It's um, it's quite light for something that looks pretty dark and heavy. It's pretty light on the old tongue, quite refreshing. But um, yeah, a little bit lacking in the sours. Could be a little bit more fucking uh, tangy. Let's see how it goes with a fucking liquid. Trying a new one out today, dickheads. This one's from Wild Roots. It's a honey tangerine, red pomelo grapefruit, and pomegranate flavor. This liquid has a bit of a fucking tang to it. The tangerine has a really nice sort of citrusy, tangy kind of feel, and uh, that grapefruit, very nice. It's a, a sort of citrusy kind of uh, almost fizzy and tangy fruit liquid. Quite liking it. Let's see how it goes with our woody fucking beer. That's a good little mixing, actually. Yeah, bringing in some of that sort of sour fruit flavour that uh, I was missing. Really like the uh, the woodiness and the maltiness of this beer, but it could do with a bit more sort of tang and uh, fruit. And uh, yeah, that tangerine, that citrus, that's a good little fucking uh, mixture with the uh, the barrel aged multi beer. Yeah, really liking that tangerine, that grapefruit over the top of the uh, the sort of tart beer flavours. It's kind of lifting a little bit of the sourness more out of the uh, the beer and uh, just bringing together a nice sort of, yeah, barrel-aged sour fruit kind of Belgian feel. It's lacking a little bit of a, a fruitiness and that kind of uh, citrus from the liquid goes well with it. Anyway, enough waffling over this shit. As I said, we're going to get down. We're going to do a little bit of a reverse. I've already recorded this uh, prior to starting the video. So we're doing a reverse. We're going to take out the MTL build that I was using and pop in the direct lung build that I now have. So we're going to go back in time, dickhead. Anyway, let's get in there and have a sticky beak. 
Okie fucker dokie dickheads, this is the packaging, your Ovis RAM will come in just a pretty simple little black box with a RAM on it. Let's see what you get inside. Oh, you get the bridge, three alternative airflow pins plus the one that's pre-installed. You've got a 2, a 2.5, a 3 and a 3.5 millimeter, and a spares bag with O-rings, grub screws and an Allen key wrench. But let's get into it. Now I've currently got it in MTL mode which is a separate kit. It's got an alternative um, top cap and there's also a different peak insulator section so it's uh, designed for um, MTL use so what we're going to do is kind of work in reverse I'm going to run you through what it looks like in MTL mode and then we're going to switch it back to its sort of stock form so uh, up the top here you've got the chimney which is a, a nice sort of spiral twisted looking uh, design to it you've got an inner diameter of 4.5 millimeters it is an o-ring system so you can just pull the chimney out when you're installing it into your boro both uh, versions of the top cap mtl and direct lung have just a simple ram engraving on the side nothing else down the bottom here you've got a little bit of threading ready to go onto a mod so you can just pulse and pinch your coils without having to put an adapter on anything like that and then you've got the airflow pin which at the moment is uh, the small MTL pin that uh, or one of the small MTL pins that comes in the kit you get a 1 a 1.3 and a 1.6 so this is the one millimeter airflow pin that comes in that uh, MTL kit so uh, what we'll do is we'll take that out in a second but before we do that let's just have a look at the deck so you've got uh, an alternative top cap as I said that uh, has that smaller um, inlet for your liquids and a little bit more of a reduction I think in the inside you can see that uh, these little sort of bits come in and uh, obviously the big difference is you don't have nearly as much liquid getting through to the deck now the deck is a simple sort of two post design kind of similar to what we've seen quite a few other bridges in the boro category used for a while you've got uh, a little clamp system with grub screws above and a little slit nice deep cut there to get your wire into and with this peak insulator that comes with the MTL kit you can see you've got like a little channel to put your cotton down into and then that hole lines up with the outer cap with the stock peak insulator that it comes with it's much more of a direct lung design you can see there that you don't have the sort of cup for your cotton to go into it's more of like a little ramp or a little uh, little divot there that your cotton sits in so we're going to put this back in in a second but uh, I'll just run you through the build that I've got in here this one comes to me courtesy of uh, Mr. Breeze Tones thank you very much Adam these are some of his MTL aliens two strands of 30 gauge wrapped in 38 gauge 2.5 millimeter inner diameter all N80 and uh, came in at about 0.5 ohms in resistance so a, a low resistance MTL coil as you can see there sits nicely in those posts and I really enjoyed this at uh, around that sort of 15 to 20 watts as a, an MTL coil and uh, no problems at all with wicking no leaking or oversaturation so this little uh, cup system to replace the uh, the stock one works really well for those uh, MTL thinner liquids your 50 50s your 60 40s and things like that so I think you guys get the fucking idea with this uh, MTL setup what we're going to do as I said is uh, strip it back and put in the uh, stock uh, bits and bobs so take your pin out put a little screwdriver or a, a, a nice ceramic tweezer in there and unthread the airflow pin so this is one of the pins I said that doesn't come with a stock the one millimeter only comes with the MTL setup so right out of the box you won't get those smaller ones you'll get a 2 a 2.5 a 3 and a 3.5 millimeter airflow pin we're going to go with the 3.5 for this one but uh, we've got to get our uh, insulator out now I probably should have taken the coil out first because as you can see it is uh, still attached and kind of uh, impeding the removal of the uh, the post to get our peak insulator out so we're just going to undo these little grub screws get our old coil out of the way you've got your positive post there so just put that to one side take your peak insulator slash juice channel out and we can put our stock one back in 
all very nicely machined, I might add. Very, very nice tolerances. And we can put our post back in there and then we secure that all with our 3.5 millimeter pin and just snug that up. So that's how it's gonna come right out of the box. Definitely suited to more of your restricted direct lung. There's your top cap, just slides on over the top. And as you can see, you've got uh, generous wicking ports on either side. Uh, but that is really the deck explained. So now what we need to do is put a fresh fucking coil in here. So we're gonna go from one breeze stones to another, down in resistance, but up in wire mass. It's a single 28.3 ohm resistance, so three strands of 28 gauge wrapped in 38 gauge, 2.5 millimeter ID. And uh, yeah, 0.3 ohms should be pretty fucking nice for a uh, restricted direct lung. As always, Adam's coils, fucking beautifully crafted. Look at that. Fucking stunning. So uh, let's get building. So there you go dickheads, that is it. It's basically the same process that you go through with a mob mini, very similar style in terms of the uh, wicking and posts. So uh, if you've done one of those, then you'll be able to do this very easily. And there we go, whacked it in a mum's boro. You can't really see it because I've got this uh, little transfer on here. Bit of a shout out to uh, Ultrev. Thanks, Drew. Done an awesome job on these uh, vinyl transfers. Be giving away a bunch of these to me Patreons. So fucking uh, thank you, mate. They came up bloody awesome. And uh, yeah, that pink. Well, it goes bloody nicely with me orange and pink combination here. A little uh, Kirby number. Fuck yeah. All right, dickheads. Well, that is it. Let's jump back up top, talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there it is, dickheads, the Ovis built and wicked for you. Hopefully that helps you out if you've got one of these or you're thinking about getting one of these. If you want to see me uh, doing the install for the uh, MTL build that I did, you can see me swapping the insulators and putting the smaller coil in there and the wicking. And it's obviously slightly different with the MTL uh, sort of setup, but very much the same. But if you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, live build stream that I did. Jeez, I think it was fucking back in November or December of last year. I've had this thing way longer than I should have before doing a review. But let's get into the pros and cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, I do like the option there for MTL and direct lung. Now, you got to buy the MTL kit separately, but it's nice that there is a completely different sort of kit that allows you to really restrict the juice flow. If you're using those 50-50 and 60-40 liquids a bit thinner and that sort of thing, having a, a smaller uh, juice flow, really, really handy. So it's nice that they offer that little kit separately with the smaller pins and everything else. Uh, but in direct lung mode, I do really love it. It's got very efficient wicking. You can run 70-30s, you can even run maybe an 80-20. I've got a 70-30 in here at 35 watts. No issues with keeping up on the wicking.
Very efficient in both modes. In direct lung, really good. Keeps up. In mouth to lung, I've had no leaking or anything like that. Leave it sitting around on my desk for fucking weeks and uh, not a drop leaking out. So uh, nice job on the design. Easy enough to build and uh, wick as well. As you can see, putting your coils in, piece of piss. Very similar to something like a mob or a haku. And uh, the flavor is very similar to both of those bridges. Fantastic. Some of the best you're going to get out of a, uh, a Boro bridge. I would say it's pretty on par with my favorites in terms of uh, flavor. Uh, you're not really going to get much better than uh, what I'm getting here. And the airflow is nice and smooth. It's pretty airy with a 3.5 millimeter pin, not the airiest bridge um, on the market, but uh, reasonably airy, but the flavor is bang on. It does have nice and smooth airflow though. I will give that as a fucking pro. Nice and smooth and not too noisy either. Build quality is another big pro on this one. It is manufactured in Spain and like pretty much everything else that I've been sent from a Spanish modder, it is very, very high quality. Tolerances are bang on. The machining is just fucking perfect. So uh, yeah, they are fucking killing it over there with their manufacturing. Big, big pro on the build quality. I like the look of this one. I like the little twisted chimney design they've got there. I like the, uh, the shape of the bridge itself. So what could I complain about? Really not much here. As I said, it is ticking all of the right boxes for me. The only thing that I would mention is it's not as airy as one of my other favorite bridges that I was comparing it to, the Mob Mini. The 3.5 millimeter, it's airy enough. It's gonna give you a, a reasonably loose, restricted direct lung, but uh, the Mob Mini certainly has a little bit more airflow, as you can hear. So if you're looking for a loose as you can get direct lung inhale off a Boro bridge, then uh, the Mob Mini is gonna be coming out in front. Uh, something like the 520 from Cthulhu would be a cheaper option that has more airflow than this, um, but not really a huge con if you're not interested in a super airy Boro airflow. It's just uh, not quite as airy as some others. Not a big fan of the small grub screws. I have seen that on plenty of other Boro bridges. It's not a unique gripe to just this one, but uh, yeah, you could easily round out those uh, grubs with uh, your Allen key wrenches. I would have liked to have seen something just a little bit more beefier, um, but again, not the end of the world. Both of mine are still working just fine. And I guess for some people, not getting everything you need for MTL vaping right out of the box. It's a separate purchase for the MTL kit could be a little bit of a con. It's again, pretty common with a lot of these uh, higher end European boros, uh, having to buy the uh, MTL pins and things separately, but got to throw that in there. But that's about it. I really don't have any major fucking cons on this thing. As I said, it is very similar to some of my favorite Boro bridges, the Mob Mini, the Haku, uh, the way that it is uh, set up in terms of the post design and just the way that it vapes as well. It is a, a fantastically tasty and smooth vape. So what are these fuckers going to set you back. Well, I did a bit of a Google and they have them listed uh, for 120 euros. So they ain't cheap, but they're certainly not the most expensive uh, boro or European made boro out there. 120 euros, it's uh, about 120 US, maybe a few dollars more, but about 120 US. You can pay quite a bit more for uh, European made boro bridges, but you can obviously find some cheaper Chinese options out there. So 120, not bad at all. The MTL kit, you're looking at 50 euros, uh, which is again, not too uh, extravagant. You're getting a, a new cap and a bunch of pins and peak insulators. They also do uh, some other nice finishes um, other than stainless steel, they do black and they do red and blue for the same price. Uh, and you can pick up a, uh, a fancy fucking um, Damascus one even for uh, 200 fucking euros if you like uh, your Damascus steel uh, and there's also gold. So plenty of fucking options there uh, in the looks department. Um, a really fucking well-made bridge, i got to say. This has got to be uh, some of the nicest uh, Boro vaping that I've had and nice to see another great Spanish product. But uh, that'll fucking do me, dickhead. So I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this fucker it gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Always helps me out. Share the video around because uh, YouTube bloody age restrict all of our content now. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, I don't get paid to make reviews. I don't take sponsorship money. There's no jumping the queue fee or anything sneaky like that. I want to make sure that you're getting a truly unbiased opinion 
on the products I'm talking about. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page for special content. I do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community. We hang out in the Facebook group and Zoom room. We drink beer and talk shit, and you can too. And those fuckers keep me doing my thing, so bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub home your fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a Spanish borrow, a Chinese borrow, or not a borrow at all. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking eye. G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan. Back again for another... Or a device to... Whoops. G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping... Baping? Baping? Baking Bogan? I'll fucking bake your cake, cunts.